Hey y'all, this is uh, Mark and Kelly on Born Free. This is going to kind of give y'all a little update and where we started from and uh, what got us here and where we're at. And because we, we haven't really done any of this, we got some short videos on YouTube and that none of them really explain anything. It's worth to how we got here and how we decided to do all this. So we're going to, I guess, start with our journey from New Orleans to where we are now in Tampa Bay. So I guess uh, we started, we bought the boat maybe two years ago. June of yeah. 2016. And the boat needed a lot of work on the outside. It's been sitting for a long time, not really being used. It was owned by two doctors. The inside looked beautiful the first time we seen it. Well, it was like, oh my God, this is our boat. We've been sh boat shopping mm -hmm. for um, about a year. About a year, and been from Corpus Christi, Texas, all the way to Tampa, yeah. Yeah. right mm -hmm. here where we are right now, actually. And uh, so we, uh, what do you want to say? I don't. We left out on December 9th after an 18-month refit. We'd been in the boatyard twice. Uh, over at Meyer's Yacht. Shout yep. out to Michael. They yep. were always fabulous to us. Yep, yep. It made you feel like you're at home over there. Right. So if you're ever in the Lake Pontchartrain area and you need some boat work done, Michael Myers, Myers Yacht Service over there is, is the place to go. Yes. So we left on December 9th. Yeah. December 8th, it snowed like six inches. It snowed all day long in, in New Orleans and on the North Shore where we're from. Um, we had so much snow in the dinghy hanging on the davits. Um, there was snow all over the boat. Yes, we had like two inches of ice and snow on the deck of the boat when we left. And we had like a going away party the weekend mm -hmm. before. It was nice outside. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my buddy Jeff Kahn had a big going away party for us at the marina. And uh, a bunch of folks from the marina came. And people, actually some friends on Facebook that we didn't really know actually stopped by and say hello. and wish us fair winds and yes. following seas and all that good stuff yeah. so then uh we the, left out our, at noon yeah, we well, got up we were trying to let the snow and the ice melt off the boat and um we just said well the heck with it if you don't slip and fall off the dock get the power yeah. cord unplugged and let's leave yeah uh, cole ran down the dock and took yeah. some photos of us shout yeah, out yeah. to cole and the lake was choppy. It was rough. Um, it was a short sail the first afternoon, but it was really, it was really windy and yeah, nasty. Yeah, if, if you ever sailed on Lake Pontchartrain, the, the waves don't really get real big in there. It's just confused and it's just choppy, mm -hmm. and it's 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 a little miserable at times. But we went to Slidell to get fuel, yeah. but the fuel guy didn't come out. It was cold. I guess he didn't expect anybody to come for fuel. We did that because we heard um, that. Gulfport, Mississippi, and that area didn't have any fuel, and we needed to correct. top. Yeah, so we needed to top because off of the, the hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gulfport had their fuel tanks; they weren't back in operation because of the hurricane, so they were no fuel to get over there. So, so the second day, instead of going into Gulfport, we sailed on. Um, we sailed from first thing in the morning after we got fuel um, till like 10 o'clock at night. We sailed all the way to Horn Island instead of turning in at, at Gulfport, Mississippi. And, and we got down there about 10 o'clock at night, dropped the anchor. We had a really nice night there. It's just yeah. cold. You know, it's cold. just really so cold. Anchored out behind Horn Island, yeah. up, up in a little cut over there. Dolphins were out playing in the morning and the pelicans yeah. were diving. Um, that day we popped up and went on to Dolphin Island. It was a really short sail, yeah. half a day, since we had put 81 miles under the keel the day before. Um, that night at Dolphin Island. In we anchored it. Mm -hmm. We've been in Allo Bay, and it's kind of a small anchorage, and it's a little sketchy getting in. I'll just stay in the markers. You're pretty much okay, you know, but it's winter months, and uh, the tide is always lower. You know, the water's just lower in the winter months because of the north wind so we got in there and uh we dropped the hook and you know in aloe bay it's it's kind of a little muddy bottom and they have work boats coming in and out of there uh, my buddy david rogers 
actually introduced us to that little anchorage and uh, and it's uh, we didn't have much room to put out enough chain for me to be like totally okay we're not gonna go nowhere I was only able to put out a about 50 foot of chain at the most and I was like because if I put out any more of that the way, the way we were swinging I was afraid we was gonna swing up on the sand or the beach in there because it's not a very big area you know and this is uh it's called a Gulf Star Sailmaster 39 but it's actually 40 feet and we so not a lot of there's not a lot of room in there so we had I'd stayed on anchor watch all night because I wasn't sure if the anchor was going to hold in that mud and we have a 44 pound rock now with a hundred foot of 3h uh, G4 chain you know but I was only able to use 50 foot of it so I was a little nervous about and we haven't really anchored with that north wind it was blowing it was it was uh, it was gusting up to about 30 you know as I have a high wind alarm and it goes off at 25 and that thing was going off all night and uh, yeah, we took turns you know, it was freezing cold. Yeah. We had all the blankets uh, piled up on us in the yeah. cockpit when we took turns. I was freezing my ass off. <laughs> we, didn't sleep. we didn't sleep well. But we jumped up in the morning. We were like, we have to get out of here. Um, went for the crazy hobby horse ride, fast, windy ride across Mobile Bay. Yeah, we was clicking along about eight knots across Mobile yeah. Bay. We was hauling ass. And then we got to Lulu's. And he was like, let's stop. And I was like... Okay. <laughs> yeah, cause we, we've stopped there before and it's got... Uh, we were tired from not sleeping, honestly. <laughs> lunch. And I wanted to, like, check out the marina there because mm -hmm. Homeport Marina is in the back of Lulu's. And it looked like a pretty nice place to stay. Yeah, so we stayed the night there. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, went on to Big Lagoon. Yeah, it went from there. Pensacola. From down to Big Lagoon over to Fort McRae. Anchored out in Big Lagoon. We stayed there. We was there for, like, three two or three days yeah. <laughs> and that's when I realized the house bank was crapping out which was a big surprise because it's brand new well it's it was a brand new 8d uh, it has a battery which I don't know if it was just a bad battery cause, I mean we pretty much been we'd only had it six months we only had it six months you know so I was like and maybe it was the healing over, you know, just it being on a sailboat. But there's a lot of sailboats that have lead acid batteries, and they last for years. But I don't know, this one just didn't it didn't last for us. And so we, our refrigerator freezer was not working, and we couldn't leave the anchor light on and the refrigerator working. We had to constantly start the generator, and uh, so we wound up pulling up the anchor. We actually went up in uh, uh, Bayou Chico. Our uh, Facebook friends, uh, the Pearl Lee, uh, they had said something about going up in the Bayou Chico and drop the anchor in the back, all the way in the back, when uh, and they could borrow a car and come fetch us to go get another battery or take that battery because the battery was still under warranty and exchange it. So we motored up in the Bayou Chico, went all the way in the back. And like I said, the winter months, the water's always shallow, and Bayou Chico in the back is super shallow. We, we ran aground twice back there, all the way in the back. I was trying to anchor out where we were going to be out of the way. Uh, there's some barges that come in there. It's like a big junk yard in the back, you know, for like metal salvage. I was trying to get out there away, trying to get out of the channel far enough. When I tried to spin the boat around... Uh, I realized we quit moving, <laughs> trying to make the turn. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, we're on the bottom. <laughs> I look behind the boat, all we see is mud. And I was like, yeah, dude, we're on the freaking bottom. So then I spun around there and I went and tried another freaking spot. And I was like, yeah, we're hitting the freaking bottom again. You know, which was pretty obvious when you come into a place. And there's a couple of boats that's facing into the wind like they're supposed to. And then there's a couple that's facing this way. And the wind's not blowing that direction. <laughs> you know, they're sitting on the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, after that, we kind of motored around in Pensacola Bay. It was kind of one of the first sunny, warmer days. And, yeah. Um, so we spent the whole day 
motoring around, not yeah. really having a plan, or it was like, other than, well, we can't, we can't, the batteries won't keep nothing charged. We were just motoring around trying to figure out what the crap we were going to do next. So we finally said, okay, let's go back to Homeport Marina down by Lulu's down in the ditch. And uh, we motored, sailed back down there and uh, pulled into the marina there, got on the phone. Uh, we found a place that would actually deliver uh, the batteries to us. And what we went back with was three uh, Full River AGM Group 27. They were 105, 110 amp a piece power, you know. Uh, so they, he delivered the batteries to us, even uh, brought the, the cables that I needed to hook them all together which was much better than that old 8D battery because that 8D battery is not trying to pull a dead body from the bilge <laughs> or, or from the lazarette in our case. That thing. Five feet down. Yeah, 150 pound freaking battery down in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I have to give out a shout out to Ryan. Oh, he Ryan, took me to Winn-Dixie in his car. Yeah, Ryan Rayfield on Sail Libra, if yeah. anybody knows who that is. Uh, he gave us a, a ride and... They come over and hang out. Yeah. Uh, one night on the boat, we had a few drinks and talking about this place and that place because he goes all over the place on his boat. You know, his, his charter business. Yeah. And uh, he actually uh, made me a map <laughs> to get into. <laughs> if you're over that way in Big Lagoon, there's a place where we call Fort McRae. And it's between two big sand dunes. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> This is the way in. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, I'm keeping this map because this is uh, the famous uh, Captain Ryan on Libra <laughs> freaking drawing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, this is his little drawing he made up for us to get into Fort McRae to anchor out in there. Obviously, this is like the hot spot. If you can get up in here, this is like the spot. I mean, you can actually, Ryan says he brings his charter boat in there or Libra in there and just drives it up the bow of the boat up on the freaking beach because the water drops off like that in there. So, we got the uh, house bank done up. Also, the... It costed chain. a boat bill. Yeah, it costed a boat bill. Mm -hmm. If you know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what them damn batteries cost. And we didn't even get it at West Marine. <laughs> no, we didn't get it at West Marine. It was still a bunch of freaking money. But anyway, then we were in Big Lagoon again. Yes. From there, we left, and we took our first offshore passage. It was 99 miles to Panama City, so it was our first long passage. Yeah, we had never been offshore before. Right. So you know, Ryan may say, get offshore, dude. Yeah. Get offshore. You'll never go back in the ditch again. Yeah, he's right. Yes, he was right. So it took us 18 hours to do the 99 oh, miles. Oh, going out of Pensacola Pass. That was a ride. We left out of Pensacola Pass. The tide was coming in, and we had that, that north wind was blowing about 15 to 20 miles an hour, and the waves going out of Pensacola Pass, they were, were steep. steep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were bow dipping. We was just crashing through the freaking waves coming out of Pensacola Pass, and I was like, holy shit, the boat to go down, that's thing all you see was sky. I was like, is this how it's going to be offshore all the way? <laughs> I was like, no, Ryan said it wouldn't be. We just got to get out there further. We got to get further out, get out of this damn pass. <laughs> So, yeah. So, we got out uh, and we sailed from there down to uh, uh, Panama, City. Panama City. It was gorgeous. It, yeah, the water's the super went, clear. After the sun went super down, clear. you could see every star in the sky. We yeah. saw the Milky Way. Dolphins nice. came splashing Ooh, in the night. Yes. <laughs> it was really wonderful. The water was so beautiful out there. So that was day 13, so we're, this is only two weeks in, and we've had a few challenges by that point. Yeah. Um, we thought the boat was ready, and yeah. it was up until we started using it, and it started breaking yeah. crap that we thought was already good. That's true. Um, in Panama City, we spent five days at anchor. Um, it was cold. It was kind of miserable. I think one or two of the days, there was a little bit of sun, and we went to a day dock, and we yeah. went... So a little old um, to Hunt's, and we had um, lunch at Hunt's. It was a cute little old place where they were shucking oysters at the bar where we sat um, Christmas past while we were in Panama City. Yeah. Um, so we took the dinghy ashore, and we went and looked in this little, almost completely closed-in little lagoon area, and there were dolphins in there. 
and then they came skinny in over the bar and went back out and we were like wow that's really cool yeah watching them <laughs> dolphins skip through a foot of water over a sandbar <laughs> right. to get back out you know it's like <laughs> but there was fish in there and that's cool. what they were doing they was in there fishing <laughs> so from there one of the days we were um just at a bad angle for the anchorage we had picked the wind had clocked all the way around oh, yes. so it was blowing 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 and i was like like a banshee it's like, can we just go somewhere else where yeah, it's like, more yeah, we're protected? Gonna, we're going to move the boat over to Panama City, the city marina. Oh, St. Andrews Bay. Or, well, yeah, we can go over that way. Oh, no, it was Panama City, yeah. Yeah, Panama yeah. City Marina. We're going to go back up in there and anchor up closer to the Panama City Marina because it's like wind protection from the buildings and the trees. We tried to pull the anchor up. Anchor, we she wants she goes up there and puts on the button and it pulls all the chain up. She she was stand on the button. He puts it down, I put it up. Yeah, and uh, she it gets about halfway up. She's like, it's not working. I was like, oh shit. And the wind's blowing. Yeah, the us winds. towards shore. Us towards the shore, and I was like, <laughs> I had to put it in gear to keep us going forward. Yeah. But I didn't want to get the chain back underneath the boat. So, uh, is what we done. We actually swapped places. I said, you come back here run the boat i'm gonna go pull all that chain up he manned the chains up yeah, with his big muscles the, the last 60 foot of chain i pulled and yeah, the anchor wind's blowing at 20 I, I pulled the rest of the 60 foot of chain up by hand and bailed it off into the chain locker and uh that was the the breaker the oh, whatever yeah. he had to throw all the cushions the and all the bedding why, out the v-bath yeah. onto the floor yeah, so what was happening was the the windless battery had went bad because uh, there was a breaker up there that the charge current and the current going out, I don't know why it was wired like that, because there's a, there's a breaker for the charge current back at the panel and a fuse for the charge current going to that thing, why it was wired like that. Anyway, the breaker went bad, which wouldn't, and it, and it went bad when that thing stopped pulling that day so what had happened is I wasn't able to charge the battery the battery was not getting charged and burr, burr, burr. because of the breaker so <laughs> that thing crapped out on us so I is what I done then after we got over by the marina is I put everything on the same post on the back of that breaker for temporary fix so that way uh, it will work well, I ain't gonna pull that you know a hundred foot of damn chain up by hand <laughs> So that was just a temporary fix until I could get somewhere where it was smooth, the boat was somewhere nice, right. and I could get back in there and fix the issue. Yeah. Hmm. So you... And then we went to uh, St. Andrews, mm -hmm. Bay, the marina up there. There, We spent on the day dock up there. We got to go ashore, go get something to eat, hang out there in town and walk around. It's a really cool place. The water's super clear. I don't know if it was just that day or if it's like that all the time. The water's super mm -hmm. clear. I mean, we were at the dock and it was uh 10 foot of water 12 foot of water and it was you could see everything on the bottom which was for us is you know from louisiana lake pontchartrain which is not normal you and can't swamp. that shit don't happen <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so after that we went all short of point st joe that was a very... oh, so you talk about that obstruction oh, oh you wanted to talk about the obstruction okay yeah we're, did you write down the coordinates for that no oh, crap Miles on. That's an obstruction. That's an obstruction. We hit it. <laughs> yeah, we, went, we freaking ran over it. It's like a mooring ball that was underneath the water outside the marina. That might have been marking a wreck. It might have been, I don't know if it was marked. Uh, it had chain attached to it with like a big ball of styrofoam attached to it. And it was, but it was underwater. It was under the water. And when we were making our turn outside the marina, we was going to anchor out overnight there because it was a protection from the wind. And I heard something hit the boat. I thought we hit the bottom. I was like, hell, that ain't came me right because we're in like 12 foot of water. Or at least that's what the depth sounder saying. The chart part said we're in 12 foot of water. Well, after we had anchored a little later on, when the boat was swinging around, that's when I seen it was a ball of styrofoam about this big around with crap, crap growing all over it. And I, I was like, what is that? So I went to go hook it with a dock pole. And that's when I felt the chain on the bottom of it. That's when I realized it's used some kind of mooring ball or or used to be, but it's, but it's not marked. You can't see it. And, and, and it's actually low tide, so right. don't, don't tell me a high tide. It's maybe two or three foot underneath the water. Right. So. so we left there? Yeah, so we left there, and we went jumped back offshore again. Short, half a day. Yeah, down to Port St. Joe. Super cool place. Yeah, Good fishing. <laughs> that was really cute there. Um, 
nice folks at that place. Um, for me, the best thing about that place is you could throw a rock and hit the grocery store. So it looks right. fabulous. Um, yeah, super beautiful fun. showers, best bathrooms of a marina that I've seen so far in any of our travels, ladies. Um, yeah, so we uh, found that place, Blue Water Outfitters. That was right next to Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, cute little that place. freaking place got every damn thing known to man, almost. Anything that anybody who likes to be outside would yeah. want. Um, and you can walk to it from the marina. And it's like, a, it's, it's a big stop for loopers and yeah. just cruisers and you know right. in general right um yeah we wandered around town a little bit but it was really misty and cold and rainy we stayed two nights um they were super friendly you know um we met um dustin and eva from not kidding hey guys we met them there yeah. um they're looping um yeah yep. but we didn't really stay at port st joe i mean we we the first night we went into the little restaurant and we ate onion rings and french fries and we ordered like a few fried appetizers because I hadn't fried any food in the boat for two weeks. Yeah, so we were kind of craving some fried food. I'm like, how about calamari? How about some onion rings? I you need want some, some grease. You want some fries too? <laughs> <laughs> the lady was like, okay. And we're like, and a cocktail. And, and we're good. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have a stomach ache. <laughs> but anyway, um, from there we went in the ICW to Apalachicola. And yeah, for, for down me, down the ditch. From there, I have to it say, it was super cold. We was freezing our ass off. That was the most miserable That's day a, of this entire trip. Yeah, that was, it was misty. It was cold. I didn't want to leave yeah, him. We in have the, a Dodger. Our cockpit is not fully <laughs> enclosed, so we 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 had actually grabbed some shower curtains, clear shower curtains, from Bed Kmart or sorry, Bed, Bed Bath and Beyond, Beyond or somewhere. We had rigged those things up on the side of the cockpit. That made a big freaking difference. It did, but you know the. And we're still freezing our ass off. Yeah, so I would say that was the most miserable day. That that was probably the night once we put the anchor down in Apalachicola. Not kidding, had tried to go over and an uh, dock by the restaurant there, and yeah, they your, wouldn't let them. They run them so, off the damn dock. Um, that's crap. I went to bed. Gonna, I was eat there. I went to bed and I was crying. I was like, <laughs> "This is so terrible. It's so miserable. It's so cold. I'm so tired." But the next morning we got up and we, Wait I had them. made a little chart. It was a little wheel with hours and knots. If we went six knots, this is how long it would take us to get to clear water. If we went five knots, if we went seven knots, and I could use this little thing, yeah. this little chart to see what time we should leave. Well, I made a mistake. I made us leave at noon and he wanted to get up and leave out in the morning. I said, well, this little chart says if we do that, then we'll get there in the middle of the night. My chart was wrong. We left at noon and we got to Clearwater at five o'clock the next day, barely enough light to get yeah, in. Yeah, because there is a lot of crab traps off the coast of Clearwater. <laughs> I think it's pretty much all down the Florida coast. Oh, yeah. So. But our passage. Luckily, we made it there in the daylight, and I could see the crab traps come in. Which I had heard there was a lot of crab traps. So I was. I was trying to make sure whatever time we left, that it was going to give us some leeway, you know, some hours of daylight where we could make it in. Because once the water started getting around 30 foot deep, you would start to see crab traps, you know. And then the water just gets shallower as you come in, and they just get thicker with the crab traps, and they're freaking all over the place. Right, but I think we were probably the most nervous in the whole trip about this 200-mile passage from Apalachicola yeah. out over the open water. Yeah, biggest offshore passage Born Free has done since we've owned it, or I don't know when the original owner bought the boat. I don't think they've done it either. If they shipped it over on the truck or if they sailed it, but yeah, she did good. Well, honestly, it was one of the best, I think it was one of the best days. I mean, yes, we were tired. Yes, he finally laid down. I laid down in the boat. Uh, when the seas got really heavy, I came and laid on this bunk. And it, it, I mean, on this settee, it was not a chair. It was a V. So I was kicked back really hard in here. Yeah, and I, was, I slept a little while. We was kicking. And we were he, moving. <laughs> he drove. Um, Autopilot he, drove. Captain well, Ron drove. He, he, <laughs> I just sat behind the wheel and make sure we didn't freaking run over right, nothing. Right. Um, I drove a little while and he sat, but I finally got him uh, right before sunrise. So we left at noon. Right, yeah. right before sunrise, uh, the sun actually came up when he was laying on the, in the cockpit trying to get some sleep. 28 hours to get from Apalachicola, yeah. leaving from the bridge all the way out to... Yeah. Damn, that damn pass is. We came straight out, 
Apalachicola out that, I can't remember the name of that pass out there, but straight off the mouth of the river straight across yeah or straight across can't remember the name of that pass but that pass is uh it's a little sketchy i don't think uh we would do it again i mean we'd do it again <laughs> it'd, it'd be on high tide mm -hmm. and it would be daylight which we, which we did do it in daylight but uh, the chart plotter was way off well, i mean talking about way off i mean when i got up on it, i started getting nervous because the chart plotter said we were in fixing to enter in three foot of water but I was like, the channel marker says the damn channel is right here. I was like, screw the chart plotter. We're following the damn channel markers. So, I mean, and, and it probably was maybe 100 yards across it, maybe 150, you know. But, you know, once you were into that 100 yards, the water. It was in the 20s. Yeah, it was in the 20s. But going in, you know, f coming from Apalachicola into that pass, the um, the water got super shallow. I'm talking about, we, I was seeing... Now my depth sounder is an older one, so at the water turbulence or it kicks up any sand, it reads two foot, even though it's actually not. But it was no boats had came through there, so when I was coming through, I started seeing five foot depths on my depth sounder, and I was like, I'm getting a little nervous. I was freaking, actually, I was freaking the hell out. He was. <laughs> and I was like, I don't freaking like this. I don't know if I should turn around, fucking try something else. I was like captain decisions yeah i was like i said i'm just gonna stay in the channel i'm gonna stay in the middle of the freaking channel there's no other boats coming I'm i was just scared but i didn't know what to do <laughs> i'm gonna stay in the middle of the markers and i i don't think we bumped the bottom i didn't see uh i didn't feel it i seen yeah well i seen like the waves are coming in so the, like if when the boat would kind of go bob down i seen like four foot eight on the depth sounder a couple of times which yeah as it drawed up so <laughs> 200 miles. Yeah, 200 miles. The spotted dolphins came. We saw spotted Atlantic dolphins. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. They, they were different looking. Mm -hmm. They followed us for a long ways. And then, so when we got to clear water, we were a little bit raggedy on the edges. For sure. We were tired. You know, we had been nervous. Hardly slept the night before. Just yeah, the last nervous. two hours, we were we were doing eight and a half knots, and we would come screaming in the clear water. Mm -hmm. Wind was blowing on the beam at like 25 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, we were screaming. But that was not the exciting part. No, it was not the exciting part. Once we get into Clearwater and we go into Clearwater Municipal Marina. Clearwater Harbor. Yeah, you know, the harbor. Yeah. I go, you know, into the channel, get into the ICW and go up, go underneath the uh, bridge into the marina. You know, and I don't know if, it, I just always like check my reverse, you know, just a thing. You know, before I enter in somewhere, you know, I, I'll, I'll idle it down. And I'll drop it in reverse just so I can hear it engage. And that's what that's what I did. I always do it, even before we, you know, had this big boat. So as we turn into the marina, I kind of throw it in reverse, and just I hear it kick in the boat. You know, I know it's in reverse. The reverse is working. So we turn and come into the marina, and we're coming in. the The tide is ripping this freaking way under the floating docks. Yeah. I mean, it's ripping through there. The wind's blowing this way, and we're going this way. And the uh, harbor master, was it the harbor master or just the... Uh, he he was on that side. He was on this side. So he comes out and says, yeah, okay, this is your slip. And there's a trawler parked here. And uh, we start to slow down. Well, I throw it in neutral, and I, my boat prop walks to starboard. So I'm going to throw it in reverse, and just pretty much hold the wheel still. And the boat will start to turn as it's sliding this way and we'll line up and go straight in. Well, I throw it in reverse and nothing happens. There's no noise. I don't feel nothing. But I was like, what? Uh, I throw it back in neutral and I like kind of slam. I said, maybe it just didn't catch. So I throw it down in reverse, kind of snap it down in reverse hard. I give it some throttle and I was like, yeah, that's something that's not engaging. By this time, the wind and the water took over. <laughs> yeah. Because so, yeah. we were dead. Yeah. <laughs> we were just drift, you know, coasting. So then she's like, she looks back because she's on the bow of the boat with the dock lines ready to throw the dock lines off, you know, and get us hooked up so we can get the boat tied up. She looks back at me. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, we ain't got no effing reverse. <laughs> she's like, what? And then uh, people come out of their boats well, from I start, all I start, over the place. I start yelling. No, I yelled, <laughs> we ain't got no effing reverse. <laughs> So then uh, people in the trawlers come to the back of their boats with dog poles. I said, yeah, that's why I'm yelling. We ain't got no 
flip it reverse, man, because I can't stop this damn thing. Right. So we're trying to come into the slip, and then I'm trying to find something soft. That slips on this side and across, this side. like this. And there's some rent boats that the marina right. rents out, you know, a little small, small, fish small boat. boats. Mm -hmm. Way in between there, there's a wooden piling with a padded thing on it. A gigantic piling. I yeah. couldn't put my arms around this piling. Yeah. I couldn't. <laughs> so this, this wooden piling, I was like, I just turned the boat, and I just dead nosed the boat, the, you know, the, <laughs> the bow pulpit into that freaking wooden piling, and we just kind of, it kind of creaked. No, it didn't kind of creak. We bent it over like 20 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> well, well, the boat kind of sprung off of that, and it, that stopped us. And I was like, what do I do? And he said, grab the piling. Yeah, I was like, grab and the piling. And I like pilot. bear hug the piling. That's why I know that I couldn't get my arms around it. I was like, he's like, put pilot. a rope on <laughs> it. Because I knew at that point, <laughs> I don't know, down. the tide's going to try to take us that way, because mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the tide's going to be stronger than the wind. But wait, excuse me. The place that we hit, there was little rental boats in there. Yeah. There was two like this and so one right here. He put us in a, a 15 foot spot, just the nose of the boat, into this piling, in this where there wasn't a fourth boat in this little one, two, three, four, <laughs> into this piling. Yeah. He runs fast as he can. Oh, that's from the cockpit. I'll from spread. the cockpit. What? Jumps on the fishing yeah. boat. I leaped off the front and of the boat. Holding down us five foot onto off the, of it. Onto the back of the rental boat, and I'm holding. This summit right here is uh, when the wind and the tide's trying to take it. Yeah, you ain't, you can't do nothing by hand really. But I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to it for dear life because I know if this thing gets away from me, at I least we didn't. I don't go, know what's going to happen. At least we didn't go into the next slip because yeah. the two Homeland Security boats were in those next yeah, slip, that's what and they were bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We didn't get into the slip. Let me correct myself. The bow sprit and six feet of the front was in the slip. Yeah, between the rental boat and the piling, which. Yeah, so we got it wedged in there, and we run some spring lines off long enough for me to get, throw some bumpers out long enough for me to get the dink in the water and the engine on the dink. And then uh, we ran some lines off the back of the boat into another to the slip we were supposed to go into. And the guys that was on the trawlers, uh, I think it was Captain yeah, Terry. Captain Terry. Captain Terry helped us. Yeah. Some of them were like, get out, go back out. Yeah, there was a lot of expensive boats in yeah, there, and the they wanted us like, to leave. Just turn the boat around and go back out. I was like, how the hell you expect me to turn this freaking thing around? I ain't got no damn reverse. Hey. Right. I like, screw you guys. I'm putting this damn thing in a slip. It's so, the, the boat's broke. I got to fix it. Yeah, adrenaline, shaking, yeah. so scared. We, so we run a line. She run the bow line and the boat. Too, so we And I put the dink against the side of the boat, and I had to push the dink. Up against the side of the boat, yeah, and, and fight the wind and the tide with the dink to get the boat to back into the slip over because we couldn't we couldn't actually pull it by hand because it was the wind and the tide was that damn strong. Right, it was taking the boat. You just couldn't you couldn't do nothing with it. But the dink right. helped us. Well, and there wasn't a way to continue to get out. It was a closed end. So yeah. if we could have probably we would have probably stayed on it and just went back out and left. But it was a closed end pier, a cement concrete pier. Yeah, so when we were going that way, we had to stop and go back. Yeah, there was no way to turn that thing was, around in there or to without get out. reverse. Or to I mean, get out. I mean, I tried to turn around, but after I realized it wasn't gonna make the turn, I just aimed for the piling. Right. And so the next thing that happened was I had to take he, the transmission out. Yes, he called around and he found the nicest man. Yeah. Okay. He was a three hour drive in Daytona and we had to rent a car. Yeah. But he called around and people wanted good jobs to jobs of money for yeah. this job and Mr. Rice it was working like out of his hundred bucks for a rebuilt uh Borg Warner direct drive transmission. That was without putting it in yeah. or anything. Yeah, I wish I I'd do all that work myself, but but Mr. Uh, Rice did it for us for a really great price. We visited him. He yeah. took it. He took Mark in the shop and showed him everything. Yeah, the, 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 the dude, uh, he pretty much gave me, and he's been doing it for a long time, and it's kind of like his specialty is the Borg Warner transmissions. Uh, yeah, we, we took the transmission up there. We went in the shop. We, Me and Mr. Rice tore it down, and uh, I mean, once it popped the pump out the end of it, it was pretty obvious. The reverse clutches had broken into so as i uh, he's like did you do a, like an emergency stop or you know was you going wide up and forward and throw this thing in reverse i was like i've never done that to the boat he said well that's kind of on the way that would happen i said well it must have been damaged or cracked clutches mm -hmm. prior to us buying the boat somebody else probably did it somebody, it's, it's just been holding on by a thread mm -hmm. 
the whole two years we've owned the boat doing the refit. So, I thought, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, I tell you, being in Clearwater, it was the most beautiful place. Oh, well, yeah, it's nice. The marina was gorgeous. Um, they could put their laundry inside because it was 30 degrees and blowing like crazy and us sat out there doing our laundry. But, you know, we stayed there for eight days and um, rested. The, all the, the loopers, they were so cute. All the old retired folks. Um, I mean, it was just a really nice place to stay for a few days. But um, Mark, the entire time we were there, he had to take the V drive off of the, the engine. He had yeah. to take the transmission off. We put it in a little basket. We rented a car. We drove three hours. We came back home. The man said, I'll have it for you tomorrow. We drove three hours again. We came back here to the boat and he had to put all of that stuff back together and God bless if this man wasn't so fabulous he talented with machinery we would not still be out here <laughs> these things have costed big boat dollars and that's just having him do it that was just the actual part of the actual fixing the thing I mean if we had to have paid someone there'd be a for sale sign on born free so I'm so thankful yeah. that Mark can take care of all of that. I cook and clean. I do the girly jobs. There's no, uh, no none of that that I have to have that uh, mm, yeah. control if I want to do the grease things and <laughs> do those things. So I thank him for doing all of that for us. Yeah. So yeah, Mr. Rice, we uh, took the transmission up there and me and him tore it down together, and uh, he explained to me what we was looking at. You know, I, I know about transmissions. You know, I, I used to be a Harley Davidson mechanic for about eight years, and just mechanical experience, period, and diesel engines and motorcycle transmissions, and it's or an automatic transmission in a vehicle is it works very similar to that, but it's actually much simpler than an automatic transmission in a vehicle. So I knew what I was looking at, and uh, he just showed me a, a few tricks of the trade of working on these transmissions. And what to look for and just little issues they have. So I'm like, uh, I wouldn't say expert by no means, but. But you've been educated. I've been educated on how to, how to rebuild That's one of these right. damn things properly. So, you know, that was a three, that was the three week mark for us. The day we crashed into clear water. We spent New Year's Eve there. Yeah. Um, we, uh, you know, just kind of rested and mm -hmm. I, I rested. God bless. He worked yeah, on we the ran, boat the entire time. We ran into not kidding there. Yeah. Again. And we did New Year's Eve with them. Did New Year's Eve with them. And steal their dog. Yeah, and steal. On their beautiful 50-foot boat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, from Clearwater, after eight days, we took a really short hop to Boca Ciega. I had looked on like Google Earth and seen a bunch yeah, of boats anchored Gulfport. out. Come in yeah. through Pass Grill. Yeah. We skipped over John's Pass because it looked a little sketchy. <laughs> Recent nose stories showing people uh, sinking their boats in John's Pass yeah. prove that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we've been at Boca Ciega. There's lots of great folks uh, there. We've met uh, CJ and Melissa and Fish and Shao. Um, yeah, from Pie Wacket. Yeah, from Pie yeah. Wacket. Um, so um, there's a cute little market on Tuesdays. There's like three... No, CJ Paramore. Paramore, yeah, yeah. that's right. And there's a cute little market on Tuesdays um, in the street. There's um, a few little bars, a few little restaurants. Oh, you're talking about CJ's book? Yeah. CJ's uh, book is out there. We uh, read that. It's Under a Smuggler's Sky. Let me give him a plug. Look for him on Amazon. Um, great book. And I know he's writing another one. Yep. Um, so we've been there. We rented a car and um, went down south. Uh, we actually went to Tico and saw... The hundreds of manatees by the electric plant that was awesome right? yes yeah was really his, cool his first time seeing the manatees yeah. and uh yeah. he was surprised cute. at how big they were kind of cute and we, <laughs> we spent five days going back and forth to um fort de soto state park gorgeous beaches oh yeah shells galore i mean just beautiful place um we scoped nice outside tent camping spots oh my gosh yes super nice super cute everything was great there um we scoped out south. We went as far as Fort Myers. We went to Burnt Store, and we also went to Sarasota to look at the mooring field now the week we had the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We scoped out a lot of places. A little further south of here, so we can kind of get a little better idea 
before we get there, we, we know what. Whether we can get in or Where we, we can, get in right. or if we even would even like stay in there, period. Mm -hmm. And we just, we did, we, we looked at Fort Myers Mooring Field and we were like, oh, no. I was like, no, no, I don't like the way, you know, the way the town is in this area. There's not like any, it was very touristy. There, there weren't any like oh, yeah. grocery stores nearby that I could go to or walk to. And then he was like, that mooring field looks. Well, uh, Party yeah. Central. Yes, and it would be day and night, and I was looking for some quiet. Um, Burnt store, Burnt store was really nice. They had a pool, um, but there is nothing nearby. Like you, that's what they even told us when we went in there. Oh, it's not like, a freaking boonies, dude. They were like, if you need anything, you would have to have a car here. So if we stop, we won't stop there. Long we might pass over and stop there when we go into the Keys. But um, Sarasota was great. It is in like the sort of downtownish area of Sarasota. But their mooring field was beautiful. Only bad thing about Sarasota is we can't get in. We'd have to go in the ICW. So we, we'll probably end up just anchoring out at different places when we go south yeah, rather we, than worrying about We try to stay that. out of the damn ice, especially over here. There's so many freaking bridges you got to open. It's redonkulous. And I was like, yeah, we're running the freaking outside. We'll yeah. just, you know, pick and choose our spots where we can come in. We ain't freaking open all that. We, I mean, we opened up... Uh, Structure e, e. Structure E or Span. Yeah, Structure E, which is, which is the only bridge we've opened in Florida so far. Cause we've j we just keep jumping offshore because it's, it's so much, much easier. So much easier. The autopilot drives. All you have to do is sit there. And tram sails. Right. Yeah. It's we we much. I much rather it. I told him when we drank a beer. <laughs> I told him when we go to the Keys, I would rather even if it took forty eight hours to get from here to there, I'd rather go in one trip. Yeah. You know, but he does. We'll, we'll probably poke along down the coast when yes. we go. He likes to see those things. I'd rather get the seasick and the bad part out of the way rather than. I like seeing crap, stopping places. <laughs> but I mean, once we make it to Marathon, which is kind of where we're thinking we're going to go, catch a morning ball down there, maybe hang out down there for maybe a month or two or something like that. But we're coming back. And that's the reason why we're spending so much time here, kind of scoping out places, because this is where we want to hang out or stay for hurricane season it's you know it can happen anywhere but i think this is a little bit safer than yeah. most places it's not very often one hits here and if it does they're not usually too bad we also talked about putting the boat on the hard for three months or four yeah. months in hurricane season and flying to california yeah, yeah. And either do some backpacking yeah or rent an rv or buy a little rv or a pickup truck out there or something and so we can go camping and or just out in Utah, out west for a few months. We don't know what yeah. we're gonna do. We There's don't really. Some, uh, what's it called? Uh, hostels. Do the hostels. Yeah, there. maybe we've done that before. That's yeah. fine too. So, you know, camping, backpacking, whatever. So we don't know what we're doing. This is how far we've gotten so far. We're in Tampa Bay today, yeah. anchored out. I anchored out uh, by the Magnuson Hotel. Right. We're about, well, I'd say, a couple hundred yards off the beach here at the Madison Hotel. Uh, super nice place. They got a bar over there, a little beach area. Uh, they actually have a marina. Right. Yeah. And they have a marina. There's a few sailboats in there. They call it a marina. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were not taking this one in there. No. It's like super sketch. It was kind of shoaly. Shallow. Shallow up there. So when you we, could see a bird standing on in the, what you think might be water. On, on the edge of the channel, sandy. Marker, I was like, yeah, we ain't trying that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no. So uh, the only other thing we had to replace was the generator. Um, oh, I've, the generator. The I've, onboard Westerbeek uh, 5KW generator, which crapped out on us. Uh, it's, it's, it's making power. It's running, but it has a bad bearing in the electrical side of the generator, back where the armature and the comm is, if you know what that is. It's the shaft. Well, the bearing in there is bad, which is no big deal. It's not that much for the bearing. You just have to disassemble the back of it, pull the housing off, change the bearing. Well, here's our issue is... It's too close to the back of the boat where they put it. You can't it, get the housing off. I can't off. get the housing off because the housing will hit the rudder post or the rudder shaft. So yeah. we'd have to take the engine out, so I gotta, take the generator out, change yeah. a $5 bearing or whatever. It and then put it all back in. And then put it all back in. No, so. I don't think we're going to do that. <laughs> that would be several boat bells. So now we've got a big 200-pound paperweight in the bottom of our boat <laughs> right so and a honda little yeah. suitcase looks like a little so we suitcase we bought a little honda generator. 2000 companion that uh, was a boat gasoline. bill that was a boat bill 
But it's keeping, you know, we, we, we hooked that into our shore power cord and this it keeps the house bank charged up and we can run the, as long as you just run the microwave, nothing else, run the charger. Um, He's drawing up the account, uh, uh, prospectus on the solar for the accounting department to approve. So he has to finish his little <laughs> yeah. diagram. We're putting solar on this. He has to finish his little diagram. Thing. <laughs> That's all there is and to it. send it to accounting to be yeah. approved. Um, but we're doing that I think immediately. She'll be much happier because it'll be quiet. Solar panels don't make no noise. <laughs> that generator does. She hates that crap. How loud do I have to play the music so I can't hear the generator? Uh, He's like, Kelly, I'm like, what? Yeah. Can't hear you over you know the generator. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Yep. This is Born Free. Born Free. And then uh, hopefully we'll get some better. I've been doing all this crap on my phone, so it's kind of raw. This was actually uncut. We're not doing nothing until it's going to post it on our YouTube channel and you can like it. Oh, and our SV Born Free Facebook page that we had, which was Sale SV Born Free, Facebook shut it down because they said that the name of the name at Sale SV Born Free does not fit Facebook standards. So they shut my thing down pending review, but that was shit. That was a week ago, and they even. So, Maybe I guess uh, just follow us at uh, Mark Brewer on Facebook, and I'll have to get maybe uh, just add. I don't, know, I don't know much about computers or Facebook savvy. I'm going to figure out some way where I can put Born Free on there on my page name, and then that way when people find it, they know what the crap they're looking for. Other than there's a sailboat mm -hmm. on the picture. <laughs> So. Um, all right, I guess that's it. And uh, oh yeah, I was gonna tell. Uh, <laughs> we pulled the anchor up because we've been sitting in Gulfport for so damn long. My buddy Jeff Khan said uh, he won't know if our anchor was stuck on the bottom because we've been sitting in Gulfport <laughs> for three weeks or four weeks, four weeks or something like that. We just so. liked it. Yeah. So yeah, Jeff, we pulled the anchor up, dude. We moved. We're somewhere different. <laughs>